Hello and welcome to this first episode in my new series of Every Game Ranked, in which I take a classic game from the 8-bit era and rank every BBC Micro version of it to determine which one is the best. In this episode, I am going to be looking at that seminal classic of the arcades, Space Invaders. Now, I was able to find a whopping 40 different versions of this game for the Beeb, so we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up, beginning with... Number 40, Alien Invaders from Granada Publishing, released in 1983 and written by Mike James, SMG and K. Eubank. Oh my word, this one is a right old mess. To be honest, it only just qualifies as a Space Invaders game. That colour scheme is lurid, especially the yellow background. The soundscape is extremely annoying and the controls, trust me, are really sluggish. There's also a rather clumsy X on the left hand side which denotes the bottom of the screen. If the alien invaders reach it, then it's an instant game over. Do I want to play again? The game asks. No. No, I don't. Number 39, Space Raiders from RH Software, released in 1983 and written by Michael Pritchett. Well, this is another one that only barely makes it into the list as a Space Invaders game, as the aliens don't even move from side to side. They just sit there, being shot at. Every so often they move gingerly down the screen, occasionally they drop a torpedo, but essentially it's a very boring game because there's barely any challenge or peril. The graphics are at least a bit better than the previous entry, but otherwise there's not a lot to say in this one's favour. You know, I often say in my videos, hey, if you've never played a game, you should go and check it out. But with this one, I'd suggest you probably shouldn't bother. Number 38, Space Invaders from Duckworth, released in 1984 and written by Carl Graham. <sighs> Whoa, this is quite the snooze fest. Now, in this game's defence, it is written entirely in BASIC. In fact, it has an apology for it at the start. So, as an advert for the powers of 6502 assembly coding, it's not so bad. But, as an actual game, it's like playing water polo in a vat of treacle. Everything is so slow, and you can only fire one missile at a time, meaning that if you miss, which happens fairly regularly, you have to wait until it gets to the top of the screen before you can fire again. In fact, everything about this game is sleepy, up to and including the collision detection. So I think we'll move on. Number 37, Beeb Vaders by S.R. and L.J. Whiting, self-published in 1982. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Not only is this the first of our Mode 7 entries, which gives it extra special bonus points, it's also the first not completely awful game in the ranking so far. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's really rather nifty. Yes, okay, the graphics do leave quite a lot to be desired, but the gameplay itself, it's pretty decent. Things start off innocently enough, but the difficulty quickly starts to ratchet up once you clear a few columns of the Beeb Vaders. The speed and the threat level both begin to rise, and it becomes steadily harder to get a shot in without being taken out yourself. And actually hitting a Beeb Vader rather than one of their many bombs is quite challenging. Well, this won't be the last of the Mode 7 entries, but it's definitely the first of these Space Invader games that I would happily come back to and play again. Which is a relief, because we've got quite a few more games to go! Number 36, Invaders from MP Software, released in 1982. Well, graphically, we're streets ahead of poor old Beeb Vaders, and we've also got a rather fetching drumbeat-style soundscape going on here. Our laser turret does look a little bit like Wizbit, or possibly a trifle, but the Space Invaders themselves look fantastic, particularly those green googly-eyed ones at the top. This game also features an unusual mechanic in that you are not permitted to shoot the shields. You get an error beep if you try. This means that only the Space Invaders bombs can destroy the shields. Also, this game lets you fire off multiple missiles at a time, and that's really rather fun. However, I have to say that the left and right controls are a little bit laggy, and most unforgivable of all, if you lose a life mid-level, the game resets and starts the level all over again. Now, while I'm all for a degree of creative license in terms of deviation from the original Space Invaders game, such things should be done to enhance the game, not make you want to throw it away. Number 35, Teletext Invaders from a and Computing, released in 1983 and written by S. Williams. 
What's this? Back to basics again? Well, in a very literal sense, yes, because this is written entirely in basic, and I personally think it's rather charming. Not only that, but for a basic game, it plays rather well. A little slower, perhaps, than the machine code-enabled Beeb Vaders, but not so much that it becomes unplayable. In fact, if anything, the difficulty here is better calibrated than some of the earlier entries. It's quite hard, although not punishingly so. You can easily lose lives if you're not careful, although mercifully here it doesn't reset the level each time that you do so. All in all, I think this one is a decent entry, and it's actually deceptively playable too. Number 34, Alien Invasion, published by the Microuser magazine, released in 1983 and developed by Tom Blackburn. There wasn't really a lot in it when I ranked these two. This game feels very much like a sibling to Teletext Invaders. It ever so slightly edges the earlier entry on the basis that it has a bit of machine code to spice it up and make the controls slightly more responsive. The graphics are also marginally better, and it has some funky sound effects, not to mention a rather jazzy intro as well. Very much a Mode 7 game cut from the same cloth as Teletext Invaders, and given that both games were published by magazines, you do have to wonder if there wasn't a little code cribbing going on. Sorry, I mean inspiration, of course. Number 33, Invaders, Model A, written by Barry Cridland and published by IJK Software in 1982. Yes, this is the first of our entries specifically written for the Model A Beeb, so it's worth remembering because we will be looking at its Model B cousin later in the video. I really like the fact that this game was written with the A in mind, and that Barry has done a great job making it a thoroughly playable game in spite of the A's limitations. The speed of the missiles that you fire from your laser turret is incredible, meaning that although you can only have one in flight at a time, they very quickly hit their target, or the top of the screen, so that you can fire off another one pretty soon after. The graphics are minimalist, but I do like the colour change as the invaders move down the screen, mimicking the coloured transfers stuck onto the screens of real Space Invader arcade cabinets. There's also the suitable duh, 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 duh music that speeds up as you kill more of the invaders, and overall I just think this is a really proper Space Invaders game, and it plays like one too. Number 32 Alien 32, written by Paul Hallam and published by Fridgesoft in 1989. Now, this one's a bit of a departure from the theme, and is perhaps only loosely a Space Invaders game, but I salute Paul's creativity here for trying to do something a bit different from the traditional setup. The graphics are impressive, and it has a nice overall look and feel. The one major criticism I have, however, are the bullets. You basically can't see them. That is a fairly major flaw in a Space Invaders game, it has to be said. The response rate on pressing the fire key is also quite poor, although if you simply hold it down it does give you a continuous stream of, well, invisible bullets, and that does make light work of the alien bad guys. Overall, a fairly good effort from Paul Hallam, and definitely one that feels like it could be modded into an even better game if I had the 6502 chops for it, which sadly I don't. Number 31, Snowvaders, written by Martin Hollis and published as a listing in the Microuser for Christmas 1984. Ah, an old favourite for regulars to my channel, and indeed I have chosen to use the hacked version of this game that I made last year because the original flicker effect makes the game borderline unplayable. There is still a bit of flicker here, but it's within the bounds of the acceptable, I think. Well, this is a nice festive edition of the Space Invaders game, and it has its fair share of wackiness. The never-ending Jingle Bells theme is a nice touch, even if it can get a bit irritating after too long, although the game does thankfully let you turn it off if you want to. The sound effects are fun, and Santa's death sequence is quite something. Each level has a variation on the bad guys, starting with snowmen and moving on to Christmas trees, evil elves and more. The response rate is not bad, but it could definitely be smoother. Although, as a type-in basic listing with only a smattering of machine code, I don't think I can be too harsh on it. Definitely a festive favourite that's always worth digging out at Christmas time, even if you wisely choose to abandon it again by Boxing Day. 
Number 30, Cosmic Invaders, written by Mark Buckwell and published by Fontana Publishing in 1984. Another fan favourite for channel regulars, this is the game that I've been using as my test case in my How to Code Games in BBC Basic series. It's another Mode 7 entry, and the graphics are big, bold and chunky, which I like. They're also animated, and although the game is a bit on the slow side, for a Space Invaders game written entirely in Basic, I actually think it performs pretty well. The source code is elegant, Mark had clearly read a few books on structured programming as the entire game is written as a series of procs and all the features of a classic Space Invaders game are here. The biggest criticism I have is that the missile speed is very slow, and so if you fail to hit your target, you are left waiting until it gets to the top of the screen before you can fire again. Definitely a game that requires a degree of accuracy in your playing style if you want to make significant progress. But for a pure, basic game, this is a worthy Space Invaders entry. Number 29, Chunky Invaders, written by Robin Whitehead and published in Beebug magazine in 1982. Ironically, despite its name, this one isn't quite as chunky as Cosmic Invaders, but there's clearly been some machine code at work here, as the gameplay is significantly zippier. It's another Mode 7 entry, and quite similar in style to the earlier Teletext Invaders, but in my opinion it is a much smoother game to play. That said, it does have its faults. The collision detection is at times a little bit wonky, and the screen redraw isn't always entirely accurate. I do like the different beeps and bongs that you get depending on which invader you hit though, and for a magazine game, it's a decent Space Invaders variant. Number 28, Alien Destroyer from Bebugsoft, written by Gareth Bolt and released in 1983. This is a lovely Space Invaders game. There's decent variation of the various rows of enemies, a smooth refresh rate, and the speed of the missiles and the response of the fire button are spot on. You can very quickly blast your way through a sheet of invaders in this game, and for possibly the first time in the rankings so far, it has a feel of a genuine Space Invaders game. My one complaint here is the speed of the laser turret itself. The left and right manoeuvring are quite sluggish, and that does detract somewhat from the game, especially when you're trying to take out the final few baddies speeding across the screen. It's still eminently playable, however, and a solid entry as we edge towards the halfway point. Number 27, Space Intruders, written by Jeff Beavis for Interceptor, released in 1983. Another fine specimen of a Space Invaders game, and this time the laser turret has been given a boost and moves gracefully from left to right, in addition to a decent response rate from the fire key. The game has a strong look, and the sound effects, in particular the mystery saucer at the top, are jolly and rather upbeat. We have a good variation of enemies, and the game bobs along at a decent pace. On the downside, the death crosses are a little underwhelming, as I much prefer a disintegration style effect, and the speed of the baddies after you've whittled them down to the remaining few is not especially taxing. One of the features of a true Space Invaders game in my book is the ratcheting up of speed with each set of aliens you dispatch, and I feel that if you get down to the last couple, they really ought to be zooming across the screen. Here, they do speed up a bit, but it's not enough to be a proper challenge. Still, this is a good entry, and once again demonstrates a decent likeness to the original Space Invaders game. Number 26, Alien Intruders by James McPherson, published in Games Computing Magazine in 1984. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking, isn't this a backward step, where have all the graphics gone? But really, hear me out, because this Space Invaders variant is much, much better than first impressions might lead you to believe. It's genuinely challenging, it requires precision firing, and once you start playing it, trust me, you will discover it's very addictive. The key responses for firing and manoeuvring are very well calibrated, and it makes the overall playability of the game very strong. Coupled to which, that panic-inducing soundscape really ratchets up the pressure, and I find that once you lose your first life, you quickly find yourself losing the remaining two as well, caught in some kind of weird death spiral that's hard to explain. I really like this game, and while it may lack the graphical sophistication of earlier entries, for me, the key ingredient for any 8-bit game worth its salt is how well it plays. And this one honestly plays incredibly well. Number 25, Invasion Force by Stephen Martin, published by Alternative Software in 1986. 
This is the first of our Electron games in the rankings, and I must confess I was in two minds about where to place it. In some respects, it's actually inferior to other games we've seen so far. The aliens don't speed up after you kill several of them, the levels have zero variation in terms of difficulty or graphics, and there's not even a dum 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 soundscape. Yet, at the same time, it's got plenty in its favour. The graphics are sharp, the white on blue is very visually appealing to me, and the movement and firing are both slick. The sound effects, while minimal, are used well, and the difficulty is not punishing, making it quite an easy game to while away the time. One quirk I found interesting is that the sorcerer at the top is indestructible. It just rains down death upon you, without being in any way defeatable. It's a peculiar choice of game design, and as with where I've ranked the game overall, I can't quite decide if I'm okay with it or not. Number 24. ASCII Invaders by Zero X Code, self-published in 2021. Another Electron entry, this one is hiding a rather jaw-dropping secret. It's a totally playable version of Space Invaders on the face of it, with a deliberately ASCII-style theme. You are the letter W, your enemies are the letter Y, and you can defeat them by firing exclamation marks. It has multiple levels, and while the enemies can't shoot you and there aren't any shields, it has most of the key components of a Space Invaders game. The movements of your W craft are also silky smooth, even if there is a bit of a flicker for the bad wise. Saying all of that, you might be wondering why it deserves to be placed ahead of other more graphically accomplished entries. Well, allow me to run a program listing. That's right, your eyes do not deceive you, this game runs on just 10 lines of BBC Basic. No machine code, no hidden memory pokes or data statements, this is the entire program. It's incredible. When you consider Zero X Code can get this much game out of just 10 lines of basic, it's no wonder his other games managed to squeeze so much power out of the humble Electron. Quite the accomplishment. Number 23. Space Invaders by Ian Thomas, published by Pan Books in 1983. OK, perhaps not quite as polished as some of the earlier entries, but this one is another programming feat in my opinion. Again, we have a game with all of the key components of Space Invaders, complete with mystery flying saucer, shields, roving aliens, bombs and a laser turret. And believe it or not, this is another wholly BBC Basic coded game without any inline machine code to give it a boost. Not only that, but it's just 70 lines of code too. Maybe not as tight as the previous entry's 10 lines, but 70 lines is honestly pretty decent. This was a type-in game from a book, and if I'd typed it in myself back in the day, I'd have been genuinely impressed with the result. And that's really not something you can say a lot about type-in games that only run to 70 lines. Hats off to Ian Thomas for this one, you get a lot of gaming mileage per line of code here. Number 22. Alien Destroyers by David Elliott, published by Program Power in 1982. This one is quite a zany, chaotic entry, and I rather like it. The general principles of Space Invaders are in play, but where this game really distinguishes itself is in the way that the aliens bomb you. They use what are essentially cluster bombs that detonate and send projectiles spinning out at various angles, making it very easy to get hit. You really need to weave in and out of the shields to avoid dying, and you must at all times keep an eye on where the bombs will explode to avoid getting caught by shrapnel. The death sequence is also rather amusing as your laser turret gets carted away by a friendly alien and replaced, always in the same position as the last one perished at. The graphics here are fun, the aliens are animated in a rather endearing way, and we get a proper ratcheting up of the difficulty as the level progresses. All in all, a very solid entry, and we'll be seeing more from David Elliott later on. Number 21, Alien Invasion by Richard Evans, published in Electron User in 1988. Another of the more minimalist approaches to the Space Invaders game here, and it's fiendishly fast too. While it lacks some of the features we've seen in earlier entries, and the graphics and sound are fairly simple, I think it plays rather well. And, like some of the other recent entries, this one too hides a secret. Yep, it's another 10-liner. If you don't believe me, here's the source code. Now, admittedly, it's rather harder to read than Zero X Code's entry, as this one is not strictly speaking a basic 10-liner, but rather machine code that's being fed in by a series of lengthy hexadecimal data statements. But still, it's only 10 lines of code, and you get a fairly playable Space Invaders game out of it. 
And it runs on both a BBC Micro and an Acorn Electron at that. Pretty nifty stuff from Richard. Number 20, War of the Worlds by Michael Goodchild, published by Brilliant Computing in 1988. As we reach the halfway point, we come to a special Space Invaders style game. This one was written with disabled children in mind, and it actually supports multiple input devices to allow players to interact with the games in ways other than the traditional keyboard or joystick. With features such as auto-fire enabled, the player can simply guide the laser turret to left and right, potentially using a paddle or dual button device connected to the user port. I'm playing it here with keyboard, and while it's a little slower than some of the other entries we've seen, I really like the graphics, and I think it looks great. There's something almost Tony Oakton-esque about the aliens, and it's a game that's harder than it looks despite the slower pace. All in all, a very worthy entry from Michael Goodchild. Number 19, Invaders from Ganymede Systems, published in 1983. I really like this Space Invaders clone. It's true to the spirit and rules of the original game, and it almost doesn't look like a BBC Micro game. In fact, if anything, it channels an earlier era, as if you're playing a retro game on a Beeb. The simple green on black is reminiscent of a Commodore pet, and that ominous beep, 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 beep music is gloriously oppressive. The game speeds up at just the right pace, and the sound effects, especially when you strike it lucky with that mystery saucer, are excellent. I'm also quite a fan of the explosion when you lose a life. This is definitely one of the entries that I've found myself playing a considerable amount, as the gameplay is pitched at just the right level. It might not look as impressive as some of the other entries, both prior and yet to come, but there's something very, very enjoyable about it. I don't know who the developers were behind Ganymede, and they only seem to have released a few games, all of which came out in 1983. Which is a shame, because I think this is first-rate work, and a truly excellent Space Invaders clone. I wish Ganymede had made more games. Number 18, Space Invaders, published by Pro Software in 1982. Well, here's an interesting entry. This one is graphically quite unorthodox. We have yellow, cartoonish aliens, some of which look an awful lot like Snapper on that bottom row there. And they're flying across a blue background. The, the overall look of the game, especially the colour scheme, is almost borderline childish. But the reality is it's actually one of the tougher entries so far. This is a hard game. I've tried it on all six difficulty settings, and even on the first setting, which is supposed to be the easiest, shown here, it's still very hard to complete a level because of the way in which the aliens speed up towards the end. You've also got to be incredibly precise to shoot down an alien bomb. I mean, it's that very, very thin vertical line. You have to line up your thin vertical line with theirs, which means that most of the time you fail and just get hit instead. The sound effects of your death, I must admit, become slightly annoying the more that you play the game, but this is offset by the victory that you feel if you ever manage to hit one of those elusive flying saucers, and possibly die in the process as I have done here. This is definitely one of the stranger entries, but it's a good game, and it is much, much harder than it first appears. So if you like a challenge, this is the game for you. Number 17, Space Invaders by Paul Blundell, published via CFAX in 1988. Yes, it's our first downloadable entry, a Space Invaders game made available through the CFAX television service. Equipped with a teletext adapter, and perhaps more than a little patience, this game could have been yours back in the day. And for what I presume was a freebie, adapter costs notwithstanding, it's really rather good. The graphics are excellent, the refresh rate and key responses are very good, and it has all the features of a proper Space Invaders game. It's no walkover either. It might start off pretty sedately, but completing a level when you're down to just a single alien can be almost impossible. One small issue I had with it is that you can't destroy the aliens' bombs by shooting at them. It adds to the difficulty, for sure, but it can also be a source of frustration at times. However, that doesn't detract at all from what is a solid Space Invaders entry. All hail CFAX! Number 16, Space Invaders by David McCarran, self-published in 1982. Now here is an entry developed by someone who clearly had a deep love for the original arcade game and studied it closely. David McCarran has produced what is, so far in the rankings, the closest to the original game we've had. The Invader sprites are expertly drawn and animated. Everything feels just that bit more like the original game than prior entries have. 
It's a shame that this variant isn't so well known. I'd certainly not come across it before. Perhaps because it was self-published back in 1982, it didn't reach as wide an audience as other titles managed to do. But the reality is, it's a superb Space Invaders clone, and it plays tremendously well. Honestly, a first-rate job from David, and definitely one to check out if, like me, you've never seen it before. Number 15, Space Invaders by Acornsoft, part of the Arcade Action Compilation, published in 1982. <laughs> this is a bit of a Marmite entry. It's the first of two Space Invaders games that appeared in my original Top 85 games for the BBC Micro Countdown series, and I know, judging from the comments, it wasn't everyone's cup of tea. Personally, though, I think it's great fun. In fact, I think it ought to be known as Teletext Invaders, simply because the graphics look and feel like you're playing the game through the TV via CFAX. It just has that teletexty feel to it. Besides the graphics, though, this game honestly plays really well. The keys are very responsive, and you can power through sheet after sheet of aliens due to the speed of play. I'm on mid-level difficulty here, but on the highest setting it is really fast and very challenging to play. While it's fair to say there's a good deal of nostalgia behind why I love this version of Space Invaders – it is after all the first version of Space Invaders I ever played at the tender age of five – that is far from the only reason for rating this game as I have. Quite simply, it is Mode 7 arcade gaming on steroids. Go on, give it a go. Number 14, Alien Attack by Chris Nixon, written for Compade and published in 1985. This is our second entry that was specifically designed for children with disabilities, again providing the facility to control the game with alternative inputs besides keyboard and joystick. It uses a fixed auto-fire mechanism, which introduces a novel kind of challenge compared to other entries seen up until now. In the early stages of the game, it's simple enough to weave left and right and simply allow the autofire to take out whichever aliens it hits, but as you advance further into the game and the aliens speed up, it becomes increasingly harder to hit your target. You have to enter into the rhythm of the autofire to align it with the position of the remaining aliens on screen to begin with a chance of hitting them. Graphically, this game is also really lovely. The aliens all have names like Jelloid, Bouncer and Muncher, with their own distinctive sprites, and that really helps bring the game to life. Personally, I think this is a very welcome addition to the variations on Space Invaders, and, as with War of the Worlds, I love the fact that it was developed to broaden the audience of gaming to children who might otherwise have been excluded. All power to you, Chris Nixon. Number 13, Galax Vaders, written by Carlos Rondal and Anna Otero, published by Computer Gamer in 1985. This is a bit of a sneaky entry because it's technically a fusion game which combines Space Invaders with Galaxians. I deliberately chose to exclude Galaxian-like games from this particular episode as I plan to rank them separately in the future. This is why games like Positron have not been included here, for example. However, because this game starts off as very much like Space Invaders, I felt it should be included. And it is a great game at that. It's incredibly fast, and you can fire off multiple missiles at a time. Plus, the role of the mystery saucer goes beyond its traditional fly-across-the-screen randomly role. Here, it is capable of launching other invaders to fly down and attack you. Another interesting divergence from traditional Space Invaders is that if you clear a level, you carry over your shields to the next level. Which means that if you're careless, like I am, you end up with basically no shields after level 1. This is a fast-paced arcade action game, and while it probably deviates a little too far from classic Space Invaders for the true purist, it's nevertheless an exciting game, and is still probably closer to Space Invaders than it is to Galaxians, which is why it's been included here. Number 12, Electron Invaders, also known as Alien Destroyers 2, by David Elliott, published by Program Power in 1984. Well, I did say we'd be hearing more from David Elliott in this episode, and here he is once more, this time bringing the excellent Alien Destroyers game to the Electron in a sequel that is, in my opinion, a considerable improvement on the original. The game went under the name of Electron Invaders on the Acorn Electron, and as Alien Destroyers 2 on the Beeb, but they are one in the same game. This is a cleaner, less chaotic version of Alien Destroyers. The cluster-style bombs are still here, but they've been suitably toned down so as to make the game a bit more playable, and for my money, more enjoyable too. The sound effects are quite abrasive, but it's good to have some sound in an Electron game as it's too often dropped for memory reasons. The aliens have richer sprites, and the overall gameplay is much more fluid. 
you can make pretty rapid progress with it, and for an Electron game I personally think it looks and feels very good indeed. Plus those explosion effects when you get hit are really quite spectacular. A colourful, brash version of Space Invaders it may be, but it's also a highly playable one. Number 11, Space Invaders from Bugbite, developed by Trevor Hall and released in 1982. This is a curious entry. It initially comes across as a bit of a slow mover, but as you start to get into it you realise how much of a challenge it actually is. The pixel precision is truly excellent. Each missile that you fire and each bomb dropped by the aliens is just one pixel wide, meaning you have to be very careful how you fire and how you shield yourself. Your laser turret is, shall we say, quite a chunky fellow, and can often end up sticking out beyond the edge of the shield, if you don't watch what you're doing. Another thing I really like is that synthy buh, 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 buh. It's somehow reminiscent of Stranger Things and the Upside Down. The game is a slow burn, I will admit that, but particularly on the pro mode, which I'm currently using here, it's no walkover. Definitely a Space Invaders game to track down if you've not played it before. Indeed, as is so often the case, Bugbite can come out of left field and surprise you with the high quality of their games. Number 10, Invasion Alert by Malcolm Bateman, published by Computer Concepts in 1983 as part of their Games Galore compilation. Holy moly, I have one word for this game, intense. As with one of our earlier entries from MP Software, we're back with a drumbeat soundscape. But this one is like the March of the Dead. It smashes into your ears without remorse, getting steadily faster and seemingly louder the more of the aliens you destroy. Over the top of this death beat you get a frequent irregular saucer screaming overhead like a banshee. Playing Invasion Alert is a thumping, mind-crushing experience that makes you feel like your very life is at stake. The first entry so far that's made me feel genuinely stressed out while playing. You have to give it a go just to see what I mean, because it may not come across as clearly here. I did have to turn down the volume on my game footage to be able to speak over the top of it without shouting. Overall, the game plays incredibly smoothly, it's very fast and responsive, and it has a few of those frustrating factors like non-regenerating shields and alien bombs that can't be shot at that keep the difficulty high. It's entirely worthy of being brought in at number 10 out of 40, but I don't know if my nerves could handle playing it too regularly. Oh, and uh, did I mention the death sequence? It's like punching a hole through the fabric of the universe. What a game. Number 9, Sparse Invaders by Neil Beresford, published by Retro Software in 2009. This is a relatively new Space Invaders clone for the Beeb, and it even comes with its own accompanying dev diary, which is an invaluable resource shared by Neil to show how a game is constructed from the ground up. I personally found reading that and then playing the game to be extremely enjoyable and useful, as it really gives you the feel for what goes into coding a game in assembly language using the Swift IDE, a tool specifically designed for coding Beeb games. Amusingly, Neil's working title for this game was originally Pants Invaders, as he considered it to be a NAF version of the original. I must beg to disagree, however, as I really like the end result. It's like a stripped down version of the game which has all the essential ingredients but without anything too showy or flash. It's eminently playable and a very worthy addition to the Space Invaders Beeb Pantheon. Number 8. Sector Invaders from PSS, published in 1983. This is very much a return to the classic style, with a colour scheme that befits the original Space Invaders game. I really like the shuffly effect of the invaders as they move across the screen, and everything is graphically very satisfying, even down to the custom font for the score. I really like this version a lot, principally because it's fair to the player and it doesn't employ trickery to make the game artificially harder than it ought to be. That said, it does have its minor deficiencies, chief of which is that the invaders don't noticeably speed up as their numbers diminish. That is, until you reduce them down to just one invader, and then this one will zoom from left to right punishingly quickly, making it very hard, although not impossible, to complete a level. Upon completion, there is a brief pause, in which you might be forgiven for thinking that you've completed the entire game. Ah, but no, the Sector Invaders return, and you must do battle once again. 
Number 7. Invaders Model B, written by Barry Cridland and published by IJK Software in 1982. Aha, remember our old friend Barry? Well, he's back, and this time it's with an entry for the Model B, a significant improvement on the Model A version of Invaders that he wrote in the same year. This time we've got much better graphics, along with greater performance and general playability. I really like this edition. It zooms along at breakneck speed, and there's a wonderful thrumming, swarm of bees-like soundscape that propels the game along. It's a joy to play, and it really goes to show how much further you can push a game when you have full access to the Model B's capabilities. But, as we will shortly see, even this edition has room for improvement. Number 6, Evil Invaders by Daniel Beardsmore, self-published via Public Domain in 2000. Technically, Evil Invaders is a mod of Barry Cridland's Model B Invaders game, but I've brought it in as a separate entry just because I really like what Daniel has done to it. He basically found some spare rocket boosters lying around and decided to hardwire them into the game using some kind of fiendish 6502 wizardry. The result is a game that is so fast you can feasibly clear a level in a matter of seconds. The speed also makes the game very tricky, which is, I suspect, why he dubbed it Evil Invaders, named for his own evil genius, no doubt. He also fixed some lingering bugs from the original version, and added this rather groovy intro sequence. So, with all that in mind, I feel the end result is worthy of appearing separately in this list, albeit alongside the original on which the mod was based. Interestingly, the default option in this version is to have the shields disabled, unlike in Invaders Model B which has them enabled. However, my playing style is definitely not good enough to play without them. Number 5. Space Invaders from Superior Software, developed by John Dyson and released in 1982. Ah, good old Superior, they never let you down, and as ever, they've done it again here with a first-rate Space Invaders game. This one is bright, colourful and smooth, providing a top-of-the-range Space Invaders experience with all the features you'd expect from the game. It's a great version, and indeed, back in the day it was my own personal go-to for Space Invaders. I really loved it, and I still do. It's a pretty noisy experience to play, but I count that in its favour as it helps make the game feel very immersive. The considerable speed with which the invaders move when you finish them down to their last remaining alien is impressive, and it's proper edge-of-your-seat gaming to manage to take it out. One extra that Superior threw into the mix is the threat of the flying saucer. Here, it isn't just a means of scoring a bonus, it actually drops bombs that are much more deadly, passing right through the shields in a single descent. All the more reason to want to try and take it out if you can. Overall, one of the very best Space Invaders games on the Beeb, and another victory for Superior Software. Number 4, Alien Intruders, published by the Microuser in 1984, written by Toby Butler. This entry was a revelation to me, as I never knew of it back in the day. This wasn't a type-in game, but rather something that you could order from Microuser by mail. And if I'd received this one through the post, I can tell you now I would have been in heaven. This is a beautiful, high-resolution version of Space Invaders, and plays incredibly well. It also has that micro-user house-style colour scheme of the three primary colours on a black background, common to quite a few of their other games and software titles. I think Toby Butler has put a huge amount of work into this one, and produced something that really flies. The Invaders themselves, while quite far from the traditional sprites of the original, nevertheless look splendid here, and the precision firing is huge fun. Also, is it just me, or does that flying saucer look a bit like a TIE fighter out of Star Wars? Well, all I can say is, if like me you didn't have this one back in the day, you were missing out big time. This is an absolute tour de force from the micro-user. Number 3, Beeb Invaders from Nibblesoft, released in 1982. Well, this has to be the dark horse of the episode. I admit, I'd never even heard of Nibblesoft, nor do I know who the developers were that produced this game, but as a Space Invaders clone, it is truly superb. As with the previous entry, we've got super sharp, high-resolution graphics, and this time they're very much aligned to the original sprites of the arcade game. The gameplay feels very much like the arcade game too, and the animations of the alien explosions are very satisfying. I even like the effect of your missiles hitting the top of the screen. They don't just disappear, but explode against the scoreline. The aliens drop a variety of projectiles, some of which can be shot and other of which cannot. 
If I had any criticism of the game, it is that the death sequence takes a bit too long. It is very well animated, and it has another one of those punch through the walls of existence style sound effects, but it does rather break the momentum, particularly if you're down to the final invader. That said, I think I'm confident in saying that this is as close to the authentic Space Invaders experience as we've seen in the rankings so far. If anyone knows who Nibblesoft were, by the way, please leave me a comment, as I'm so impressed by this game. Number 2. Space Invaders by Richard Tricky Broadhurst, published by Trickysoft in 2017. Well, if you're a Space Invaders purist, then you could not wish for a finer version of the game on the Beeb as the one that Tricky has produced. This is an almost pixel-perfect recreation of the game, with sound effects that feel just like playing the original cabinet game. This is Space Invaders stripped back to what the original Taito game was all about, and the gameplay here is simply exceptional. The laser turret's movements are silky smooth, and the fire button responds instantly. I'm always in awe at what Tricky is able to get the Beeb to do, and this title is yet another example of how, in the right hands, the BBC Micro really could run games that rivalled all of its competitors. The polish and overall impact of this game cannot be overstated, and I strongly urge you to go and play it if you haven't already. Tricky is extremely generous at making these games free to download and play. Also, if you're able, I'd recommend running the disc image on a real Beeb, as that is what he programs them for, and it's an even more authentic Space Invaders experience than you can see here via emulation. This game is, in short, an absolute triumph, and would, I am certain, impress Tomohiro Nishikado himself. Which brings us to number one, Super Invaders by Acornsoft, written by Jeff Crammond and published in 1982. Haha, <laughs> you didn't think Acornsoft's only contribution to Space Invaders was that Mode 7 version that we saw back in Entry 15, did you? Not a bit of it. And who did they get to write their flagship Space Invaders clone? None other than the mighty Jeff Crammond himself, perhaps better known for his racing and flight simulation games like Revs and Aviator. Here, he turns his hand to the arcade classic and produces what I believe would have been the very best version you could have wished to have back in the day. It's high resolution, beautifully animated, and plays like a dream. I especially like the subtle caterpillar tracks on the laser turret that rotate as you move left and right. Unlike other Space Invaders games we've seen, this one comes in three difficulty modes that aren't simply about how fast the invaders move. In the mild encounter, it's a standard game of Space Invaders, but in the uncomfortable mode, we get many more bombs being dropped on us, and for each flying saucer you fail to bag, the arena within which the invaders move shrinks. It continues to shrink with each new saucer you fail to hit, making things, well, uncomfortable. And then we have the third difficulty mode, the so-called terrifying encounter, in which the uncomfortable aspects persist, and we now have homing bombs, making things extremely hard. But what I love about it is that it's not hard to the point of becoming unenjoyable, it simply adds more of a challenge while still continuing to be a very playable game. Overall, what Jeff has done here is give the Beeb the Space Invaders game we all wanted, and one to rival the rest of the 8-bit market to boot. I think it truly deserves the name Super Invaders, because that is precisely what it is. And there we have it, all 40 Space Invaders games for the BBC Micro ranked. Whether you agree with my particular rankings or not, I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the weird, wonderful and wacky variations on the classic Space Invaders game, and that you'll like this video and leave me a comment, as I always love hearing what you think. Did I get the rankings correct, or have I overlooked one of your favourites? Do please get in touch, and in the meantime, I hope you'll join me for the next episode in the series. And until then, goodbye!